performance. World record holder in the marathon, two hours and 21 minutes. She also holds the world record in the 5,000 metres and she was a top class skier, 15th in the world championships back in 1978. So it seems that there's no stopping this Ingrid Christensen from Norway, but if anyone's going to stop her today, it may be the little Scottish lass who's not too far behind her at the moment in Liz Lynch. Liz, of course, doesn't have the same performances that Ingrid has on the board for 10,000 metre running, but she's not far behind. And speaking of not far behind, that's exactly what's happening in the men's race at the moment, with Adam Hoyle still leading at the three-mile mark from Australia. Edward Nabuname in second placing, who really has been the revelation of this race. Barrios was the revelation of last year's road circuit, but it's Nabuname's day today at the moment. And then a gap to that group of world-class athletes that include Di Costello from Australia, world marathon champion, Musioki from Kenya, Barrios from Mexico, and of course Ninao from the United States. It's a formidable group and I expect them to take some distance off these leaders at some stage. Yes, I think they will, but a good performance here from Edward will certainly make him more renowned um, in the world in general. In fact, I think at 18 years of age, he's running an absolute tremendous race. I mean, these are the best runners in, this wor in the world and Ed Edward yet isn't a senior athlete. Well, his best time um, for 10 kilometres certainly won't be as fast as some of the, some of the other athletes. They went through the five kilometre point, by the way, in about 14.25. So Hoyle is on around about 28.50 pace. So I'd say that Ninao's world record is safe at this stage and they're running for the $50,000 first prize. Yes, I think so. Um, both Edward and Adam are only 29, 30 minute 10K runners. The 27 minute runners, of which there are some six of them in this field today, six athletes that have broken the 28 minute barrier for 10,000 metres are all behind them. So it's highly unlikely that we'll see a world record here. Adam must be wondering just who is this man behind him. He keeps looking back. He obviously hasn't seen Edward before. Hoyle is a, is a very good athlete. He was 30th in the World Cross Country Championship last year. That's a really splendid performance. It certainly was, but perhaps one of Adam's biggest problems is that he's, is his consistency. He tends to be a little bit inconsistent. So some days he can come out with a fantastic performance and he's certainly having a brilliant run here today. And then some weeks he might be a little bit off and not perform as well as you'd expect him to. You can notice that the road has dried. We had light drizzle before the start of the race, but uh, very dry at the moment. And uh, Hurl leading from Nabu Nome. And then that gap, about 20 or 30 metres, or a little more, to Ninao and Barrios. Almost at the six kilometre mark, it is a hill coming up between six and seven kilometres, and that could really sort out the winner of this Bobazan Bali 10K. So a most exciting finish coming up. Nina looking quite strong in third. And Shahanga tucked away in that group. And we'll be back to follow the race after this break. Today he's looking for a better time. As we go back on the course, we can see that he's still there with leaders as they're about to climb this hill. It really has been a remarkable performance. It certainly has. As I said, I was really impressed with how he ran in the Asian Games. He ran really aggressively. He was only beaten on the last lap of that 10,000 metre race from a Korean athlete who just had an incredible kick and Edward couldn't quite stay with him. But he's obviously going from strength to strength. And even though it looks like Mark has brought that second group up and these athletes are just about to be passed, it's really to Edward's credit that he's, he's run this well into the race. This is a tough part of the race too, Galen. It's up the hill with Hoyle, Nabuname, and now Ninao and Akutsu, also from Japan, are tackling strongly. It's going to be critical now for Hoyle and uh, for Edward to see if they can stay in touch. I think they'll find it difficult. It is fairly warm. I don't think um, Adam really made big enough allowances for the weather, and I think he's gone out perhaps a little bit too hard. In the warmer climate, it's really important to drink plenty, wear loose-fitting clothing, and to start out moderately when you're racing. And I think maybe he went out a little bit too hard early on. So it's Ninao leading after four miles. Akutsu from Japan in second placing. And then Nabuname. Grigorix moved into fourth placing. Hoyle just behind him. Shahanga and Barrios still running a, a very sedate race at the moment. And then a gap to Lloyd and Di Costello, the two Australians. Barrios has been a little bit of a surprise because he really made his mark in the United States with some strong, aggressive front running. 
Well, he did originally, Bruce. When he was at, at college, he was a junior athlete in uh, Texas. He used to always run from the front and run aggressively, but he said that he, he was always beaten. So he decided in, in his latter years that he'd sit back behind and he would wait until the last mile or two and make a kick and come home strongly. And that's basically how he won all of his races last year in the US. Well, Ingrid Christensen wins her races from the front. She's one of the great front runners in the history of athletics. And at the moment, she is leading from Liz Lynch. The men around Ingrid not giving her a lot of room at the moment. And Liz is getting a bit of a break here. At least she's having a, a nice clear run and can see Ingrid in her sights. I don't think the men around her are helping Ingrid at all. In fact, it's probably impeding her progress. It's not as if she's got a few runners that are slightly ahead of her and perhaps pulling her through to a faster time. They're actually running just beside her and just behind her. So they're probably concerned with wanting to beat the first woman. They've just come into an aid station here. You can see both Ingrid and Elizabeth have grabbed water. Neither of them appear to be drinking it, but they're pouring it over their heads. It really helps with aid, aid you know, of cooling the mechanisms and everything else. Um, that might be why Liz dropped back that 10 or 15 metres, so that she could get a clear run into the drink station. Aid stations, are they unusual in 10 kilometre races? Well, they are, Bruce, but I think uh, it was really important to have a couple of aid stations in this race. And in fact, the athletes got together collectively only yesterday and approached the race organising committee and said, um, it is warm here in Bali. We think it's important that we do have at least one or two aid stations on the course. Not so much for themselves as elite athletes, but there are also 1,200 Indonesian and locals competing in this event. And 10,000 metres in warmer weather um, could cause dehydrating um, problems with some of those people in that mass participation field so consequently the race organizers listen to the wishes of the athletes and they've included a couple of aid stations on the course and i think we should point out that in that mass participation race is one of the world's greatest runners alberto salazar who's decided to take it easy today and be part of the fun of the race it's really nice to see alberto running he's had some problems with his foot since he's been here and he's been limping um, and it really was out of the question for him to race hard against these elite athletes but rather than not compete at all he decided he'd join the mass field so a terrific struggle coming up in both the men and women's race the women running for thirty thousand dollars first prize the men for fifty thousand dollars and ingrid christensen leading liz lynch by about 15 meters and the men, of course, Mark Nee now has now taken up the lead. But Christensen has a real fight on her hands because this girl from Scotland is in fine form and has the world record holder in her sights. Timber from the jungle. Bazan Bali 10K. The top people in the world are here. Barrios Musioki, two of the top three in the men. And Christensen and Cooksey, two of the top three in the women's world rankings. A little bit of a surprise in that Cooksey hasn't been seen so far, but Ninao certainly has. He's leading with a Kutsu, and they've got a bit of a break from Barrios. Well, Ninao, of course, is the fastest runner in the world on the roads with a time of 27 minutes and 22 seconds and one of the fastest men on the track in the world. He really is a remarkable athlete, is Mark Ninao. Gaylene earlier talked about his nocturnal habits of having his second run for the day at around about midnight. Well, he's not running at midnight at the moment, but he's running particularly well, as he always does. Mark Nienau, 29 years of age. He won the Van Damme Classic in an American track record of 27 minutes 20. Back in 1984, he set the world record for 10 kilometres, 27 minutes 22 on the road. And he was second in the American Championship in a time of over 28 minutes. He really is one of the top 10 kilometre runners in the world. And he's proving it once again today in Bali. That's right. And he's not only a talented runner, Bruce, he's also an exceptional musician. In fact, one of his favourite pastimes, he was telling me, used to be to close himself in the bathroom of, with a couple of his university friends and jam away on his guitar. So the acoustics were great. Well, I wonder if Liz Lynch or Ingrid Christensen have tried that. I think the performance of these two girls has been outstanding when you remember that Marty Cooksey hasn't been seen so far and with the seven kilometre mark, Lorraine Moller obviously is out of the picture and Lynn Williams as well. So it's really come down to two girls. Yes, it has. Ingrid is especially a very tough competitor. The Norwegian winters are very, very harsh and there's often a lot of snow on the ground. So because she can't get outside and run, she runs hours and hours and hours a week on a treadmill. That must be tough mentally. It certainly must be. And I think that perhaps it's, oh, she got a bit of a bump there from one of the male competitors. They're not really giving her much room, are they? No, they're not. It's a, it's a bit, bit of a tight squeeze. It's really not quite fair on her. In fact, it, it's not surprising that Elizabeth Lynch is just holding back that extra five to 10 meters so that she's got some room to run on her own. 
But mental toughness, as we go back to that point, has been really one of her strengths, hasn't it? It has. She um, works with a sports psychologist to be positive and aggressive. And she has an attitude where she said, if you want to run fast, you have to be willing to gamble. And she certainly does gamble. She's a front runner. She's aggressive. She races against the clock. And a lot of the time, she'll sacrifice, perhaps, a performance in pursuit of a better time. Well, Liz Lynch has had a terrific year as well in 1986. She won the Commonwealth Games Championship and was seventh behind Ingrid in the European Championship after doubling up. So let's leave the women for just a moment and go back to the men and we can see from high above them that it's still the two leaders, Ninao and Akutsu, Shahanga and Barrios and Gregoric in the top five. So Ninao leading. The gap between the first two and the next two runners about 40 or 50 metres. So it is significant, but there's still a chance for Barrios to come through at this stage or Shahanga and Gregoric. So let's just have a look and see where the runners have been and where they're going. As we said earlier, there is a rise in the course between six and seven kilometres. That's behind them now, and that's where Ninao made his break on the two litres. Akutsu went with him, but he may be paying for that at the moment. It's mainly downhill from this way in, and they finish at the Noosa Dua Hotel Complex, where a big crowd will be greeting these runners. Really is a fabulous course with the palm trees all around. The crowds have been very good. The terrain is excellent, and all in all, I think given the right conditions, we can have some very fast running here in Bali. But here Ninao seems to be making a break. He certainly is. The kutsu is looking tired. He's kind of tightened up in the upper body and the shoulders, and it looks like he's starting to drop. There's essentially five runners left in this race, and of course there's only prize money down to third place. So even if Ninao does make a break and ends up running on his own, the next four athletes are certainly going to be striving to try and get some of that good prize money. So Mark me now leading, he can see the $50,000 in his sights. Let's take a break. Some of the great sights of Indonesia and welcome back to the Bobazan Bali 10K. And as we said earlier, it really is a top class field. Barrios and Musioki, the top two runners in the world last year. Ingrid Christensen and Marty Cooksey, all in this race. But Mark Ninao looks to have made the break now. Hakutsu from Japan in second placing, and he's about to be passed by Barrios and also Shahanga. But Ninao, who last year broke 27 minutes 30 twice on the track, that's quite remarkable, has a big lead. Shahanga looks to have gone past Hakutsu uh, with Barrios in fourth placing. And those runners, of course, are running for big prize money. But Ninao has a big lead. Well, Nino may have a large lead in the men's field, but Ingrid's really struggling to get any distance on Elizabeth Lynch. Um, I'm not quite sure what the women are running here at this particular point. They could still have a very good chance of the world record. Ingrid, of course, has run 30 minutes and 13 seconds on the track, but the world road record stands at 31 minutes and 32 seconds. So even in the warmer climate here in Bali, it's a very real possibility that these women could put in a world record performance here today. But who does it, we have yet to see, because Elizabeth Lynch, Lynch is definitely in there with a very real chance. Well, after eight kilometres, I would have expected Ingrid to have a bigger lead, that is for sure. And Liz is right there with her. There's very little between them as they're taking some aid now at the five-mile point. Male runners still around Ingrid, but Lynch has really been a surprise packet, staying with Christensen all the way. OK, let's go back to me now who has his big break at the uh, nine kilometre point. He's looking at his watch, you noticed just then, so he's obviously concerned with the time and he's also turning around and having a look behind. So he's perhaps in looking at his watch, realise that they're not on world record pace. He's not going for a world record. Well, Rob uh, Di Costello, who lost contact fairly early in the race, He'll just be looking for now just a good, solid performance. I think so, Bruce. He's not going to be disappointed. He knew that he wasn't in 100% form when he came to Bali. Um, he'll always give it his best. He always does. And two women giving their best at the moment are Ingrid Christensen and Elizabeth Lynch. They're staging a terrific struggle for the $30,000 first prize and who knows, maybe a $150,000 bonus for breaking Ingrid's world record. Cooksey and Moller and also Williams, as I said earlier, haven't been seen in the picture, and Liz Welsh as well. This race has been dominated all the way by Ingrid and also by Liz Lynch. 
And Liz still looks extremely relaxed. She hasn't tightened up at all. She's very, very fluent. In fact, she's got a beautiful style. She's a very slight runner. Ingrid also is fairly slim, but a little bit stronger and broader across the shoulders. But if you look at Liz's arm carriage, she's holding her arms low. She's running very rhythmically and very smoothly. She doesn't look at all stressed. She looks rather comfortable and she looks as if um, she's quite, quite happy to be tucked in there just behind Ingrid. Well, let's have a look, Aileen, at some of Liz's best performances. She won a number of road races in America in early 1986, but made her big breakthrough at the Commonwealth Games, where she defeated the former world record holder at 5,000 metres, Anne Ordain, and went under 32 minutes for the first time. Earlier, she'd won the UK Championship, was seventh the European Championship, but in that championship, she had already run in the 3,000 metres. So, an athlete of the highest quality and somebody who looks to be ready for a major breakthrough in 1987. Well, the way she's running here today, Bruce, she could very well go under the 32 minute barrier for the second time because she's running really strongly. In fact, she's slightly closed that 10 metre gap that Ingrid had on her for the last three or four kilometres. And Ingrid looks um, as if she's getting a little tired now. In fact, she's pumping her arms rather vigorously here. She's constantly glancing over her shoulder to see where Elizabeth is. So she's obviously concerned about her. Do you think it's been an advantage or a disadvantage? Christensen now is trying to put some distance between herself and Lynch. An advantage or a disadvantage for Christensen to have led all the way? Um, I think Ingrid is happy as a front runner. Um, I think it's more an advantage for Elizabeth to be a bit of a dark horse and to be able to have Ingrid in her sights, though. This really has Ingrid in her sights at the moment. A great finish coming back. More after this break. Road race is not only one of the best, it's the richest race. The men are running for $50,000 first prize, a bonus of $200,000 if they can break this man's world record, and the women $30,000 first prize and a $150,000 bonus. Gaylin, I don't think Mark Nino is going to break the record, but I think he has got the $50,000 in the purse. I don't think he's at all worried about that world record right now. He keeps looking over his shoulders. He's concerned at that Barrios and that finishing kick that, that, that the Mexican has. So Nino getting very close to the line. The clock starting to tick over towards 28 minutes and 30 seconds. A terrific battle between Barrios and Shahanga for second and third and Akutsu behind them. We can see that Barrios has now taken over from Shahanga. It's really just a sprint home now. It certainly is. Mark's, uh, I think, got a big enough lead there that he's going to cross the finishing line first, but Arturo he keeps looking over his shoulder to see where Shahanga is. So everybody's concerned about staying in front of the next runner. So Nino crosses the tape about 28 minutes 37. That's approximate. Uh, Barrios comes through in second placing, so that's $20,000 for Arturo. Uh, third, Shahanga, that's a really solid performance. A good prize money for Gidimus as well of $10,000. Our Kutsu about to finish, so he's done really well. He went with me now, of course, when they took over from Hoyle earlier on, and Gregoric coming through for fifth, so that's a solid performance by him. It certainly is, but what is really impressive is Eduardo's performance. He's coming into sixth place here. He's only 18 years of age. He's beaten some of the best runners in the world. It's absolutely incredible. And Adam Hoyle, we've also seen, is a, is a fairly young runner. He's just back there, just behind Eduardo in seventh. So Nabunama's time is just over the 29.20, so it's around about 29.26, which is a personal best, magnificent performance. Hoyle coming through, and Gaylene, you talked about some of the great runners in the world. Well, one of them's Rob Di Costello. Not often we can say an 18-year-old can beat the Deke, but he's coming through. Uh, Di Costello around about 29.40, but a terrific battle coming up with the women. Uh, it's Christensen and Lynch, and Lynch has got right up almost alongside Christensen at the moment. Gaylene, you're going to go down and try and find Mark Nienau for us? I certainly will. OK, so we'll be hearing from Mark Nienau in just a moment, but he's already been crowned as the winner of the Bob Azan Bali 10K, but just who is going to win between Christensen and Lynch? There's absolutely nothing between them. It's been a terrific battle from the very first kilometre. Christensen has made the pace all the way. The world record time is 31.32, and whilst I don't think they'll break that, they're not all that far away. It really has been a terrific clash. In fact, Lynch looks as if she may be taking over from Christensen. Let's go down and join Gaylene, who has Mark now with her. Well, I saw you looking over your shoulder there a couple of times over the last couple of uh, yeah. kilometres. Who were you worried about? Well, I wasn't really worried about anybody, but I didn't want to let anybody get close enough to, to get their confidence that they could catch me. I felt all right, but I knew the times were going to be insignificant because of the weather. So I was just trying to make sure I had a comfortable lead and was going to run easy in because it was quite hot and, you know, there's no use uh, overdoing it. 
Were you concerned at all early on in the race when Australia's Adam Hoyle and the young Indonesian runner made such a clear break? Uh, I don't know. I guess I was a little concerned watching them, but I, I, was, I was more concerned at that point with Berrios and, and Rob and, and Mujoki and Shahanga and, and the other runners right around me because those were the people who, who you know, beforehand we were looking at. So I, uh, I was more concerned with them at that point still. So Mark now has just collected his biggest payday ever of $50,000. Just who will win out of Ingrid Christensen and Liz Lynch. It's almost a sprint home at this stage. You see a couple of the male runners just in front of them. Oops, I think we might have gone the wrong way there. Yes, back on course. So Liz Lynch has established a break over Ingrid Christensen of about 20 or 30 metres. Ingrid is the world record holder in the 5,000 metres, has a faster 3,000 metre time than Liz Lynch, but all that counts for nothing at this very moment because Lynch is away and really flying. Had a look back over the shoulder, but is very close to the finish. In fact, has crossed the finish. Time around about 31.57. Ingrid's come in at about 32 minutes and three seconds. Liz absolutely exhausted, but no doubt delighted. $30,000 first prize. There's some of the Australians, Lloyd De Costello and Hoyle. Let's see what Gidimus Jahanga has to say. About when or how close to the finish was it when you decided that you really weren't going to be able to win it and you're fighting with Arturo Barrios for second place? Well, uh, when I found Barrios was giving up on, on, uh, on Neno, uh, then I had, I had two choices. Either go with him and get uh, a first, I mean th second or, or third, or let them go and then get fourth place or just go on and finish forever. Elizabeth, congratulations on a fantastic performance. You must have been really pleased with your win over Ingrid Christensen. Yeah, it's the first time I've ever really beat anybody um, that class, so I think now they've really made a big breakthrough, and uh, I'm just really pleased. Were you surprised at how fast you ran today in, in the condition? Yeah, um, I think I ran about a minute and a half faster than I've ever done on the road. Um, it's my second time ever under 32 seconds, so... You know, I'm, I'm just really pleased and I was I was really surprised that um, I ran so well in the heat because at the end I felt as though, you know, I, I, I was so hot that I had to run to, into the water. But um, I was just really surprised that I went so well, but I felt really good right from the start. And yesterday I felt good, so I knew I was going to run good. It was just a matter of hanging on to Ingrid and just seeing if I could beat her, you know, over the last 300 metres. I knew that the list was uh, in good shape and she has done a lot of good races in Europe the last uh, month, so... I was afraid of her, but I tried to don't think uh, about uh, the good shape who she was in and tried to do my own race. Were you pleased with the time? It was still a very, very good time in these conditions. Yes, it's, uh, I'm not sure of the time, but it was a little bit over two, 32 minutes, maybe. And uh, it's not bad, so coming races after this, so I've tried to, to keep on training and be better shape later. Galene, thanks for the interviews. They've been absolutely excellent. Let's check the results. Mark now $50,000 richer. First in 28 minutes, 37.15 seconds. Arturo Barrios second. Gidimus Shahenga third. In the women's race, Liz Lynch, 31 minutes, 57.65 seconds. $30,000. Then Christensen and third, Marty Cooksey. It's been a wonderful race. The Bob Azan Bali 10K. It's bye-bye from beautiful Bali.